Man, it's been a we, we uh, last time we did one of these videos was a couple months ago from True Green Seven, uh, creating new Pokemon. Um, where is my book at? Hold on, uh, right here, right here on hand. Uh, so I got my super deluxe essential handbook of Pokemon, and I'm gonna be looking up some of the Pokemon that he talks about in the video. But this is him creating new Pokemon, so they won't be in the book. I'm aware of that, but still, play. Hey. Hey guys, Ron here, and welcome What's back going to the series in which I document my walks around the world and create a few Pokemon based on what I saw on my walk. As I stroll, I usually point out all of the potential neat stuff I see that could make for some creative new Pokemon designs, and then we'll put them together and draw some cool Pokemon. So I hope you follow along and tweet at me some Pokemon you created using the stuff you see oh, in this video, so or cool. even your own walks. Make sure to check out the previous episode by clicking the card on the top right corner, but for now let's focus on today's walk. This was recorded in April before the flowers could bloom, but right when the weather was becoming nice and warm. So basically the beginning of spring. And since I spent all the I'm other seasons walking around my neighborhood, I talking. thought we could finally step out and maybe go somewhere new. I decided it was time to show you guys the High Line on the west side of Manhattan. So let's go! The High Line used to be a train line that would run a few stories above the ground, but it was abandoned and eventually converted into an urban greenway. Basically a garden path that is high in the sky and spans more than 20 blocks. You can see the old blocks? tracks that the trains ran through. It's super funny because New York used to be all forest, then became a huge city, so it's nice to see something like a railway going back to something natural, like a garden. Although again, this was before the flowers were blooming. I think the theme of this video is going to be a combination of city and nature, metal and grass. Maybe some Pokemon that depend on the city or Pokemon that depend on other Pokemon within the city. You can see people sitting down and looking at the view of the streets. I like how these seats come out of the ground, they, they look natural. The tracks that are covered in grass are giving me ideas too. Perhaps a steel type that is covered in plants. This looks so futuristic. Look how the old train tracks are now part of the path. And you also get to see a lot of cool new architecture along the way. You can tell that this dude is like has like a real affinity for aesthetics. You know, how things feel, how things look, how things like work together. And I think that's like really unique, man. I think this guy's got a um <clears throat> a really unique way of seeing things. And like the way it's so chill. It like reminds me kind of like, like a daily dose of internet mixed with gaming kind of a thing, and I really like that. While still having a view of the old buildings, maybe a Pokemon that represents both old and new. I love the combination of old train metal and new metal. But let's get closer to the new cone-shaped sculpture over there that, that just opened up actually. So awesome. Look how huge this thing is. It actually looks alive, like it could be a legendary Pokemon with people living on it. Let's go on top of it. Right now I'm in the center, so let's climb this big boy and maybe get some more inspiration for this legendary Pokemon. I could take the elevator, but ain't nobody got time for that. I already walked 30 blocks and now I have to go up 10 flights of stairs? I'm gonna die. Ain't nobody got time for that. At least the view is pretty. It really does look like some kind of living environment, like a pine cone or hive. Look how alive it looks like from the top. It's actually super windy, so I'm scared of the camera blowing away. But seriously, as I look down from the top, I can finally understand what Pokemon I'm gonna be making. It'll be our first legendary. How about a giant and ancient steel type that really? has a cone-shaped hollow back really? filled with endless amounts of plants in which Pokemon could eat and rest on? This entire sculpture that I'm on is actually a monument that is meant to represent, honor, and idolize this ancient legendary. Let's open up Photoshop and design this kind beast. First, we gotta draw the basic shape. This is exciting. Let's even close to the hard part. It has the cone back and the face and then the legs. We know it has multiple layers like the sculpture. It's like a big turtle. And basically, the entire back is just the sculpture we saw. It's gonna be hard inserting the hive-like hexagon patterns that weave together, but I'll do it because I love ya. That's a lie, by the way. Don't expect me to get you a birthday present or anything. I would get you a birthday present. Actually, you know, our Discord friends, we do a mildly, a, a cheap and mildly inappropriate uh, gift for all of our 18 year and older, longer than year Discorders. Um, so if we've ever talked before, hit me a message on your birthday and we'll talk about it. So after some hard work, the pattern's done, and now it's time for the face. It's facing the side, so we only see one eye. And just like it's back and face, the legs also have segmented armor. And back on the face, I honestly don't know what to do yet. I experimented with different head shapes, but they all look whack. But I do like these patterns that I added to the face and legs. They make them look ancient. Very nice idea, me. But now I want the body parts that don't have armor to look like they're made of wood. Or something like that, since it's steel and grass type. But it's primarily grass type because plants grow on it. Each level on its back basically has a different environment and collection of plants from around the world. Maybe thousands of years ago, it roamed the earth in order to collect different seeds for its back. It's very turtle-like, so it makes sense that it's very old. 
Perhaps it's related to Torterra. Now I'm just making a more refined version of the drawing. If you see, parts of its metal body is chipped and cracked. It's old, I, I can forgive it. But here is the final design. Say hello to Bygone. A combo of the word bygone, which refers to things that are that old. That is cool as hell. Old and biome, which is a large natural habitat. It's super friendly and wise. It loves and protects all the Pokemon that depend on its back. And, and, and the plants on its back for nourishment and protection. It'll even let any human it trusts to seek shade under its trees or eat from its fruit. And even if the human was to somehow abuse the trust of the legendary Pokemon, Bygome can just order all the Pokemon on its back to attack the human. But that rarely what happens. The fuck? It has gained humanity's respect as it was the first to protect those who were worthy and, you know, give them seeds to plant, you know, farms and. Food, food's important. It roamed the earth so that its back would be filled with all the plants possible. It's the ultimate garden. That's actually the name of its ability, ultimate garden. It's a bit OP, but it's a legendary. It has a 100% chance of having whatever berry it needs, which means that it could heal whatever status effect it has, or use a citrus berry if it isn't in need of a status healing berry. So it's just like 100% CC immune. You can only use time. one berry per battle though, but this allows him to use the empty item slot for other things. However, it's super slow, but damn, is that defense phenomenal. But we're not done yet with this concept. How about creating one of the Pokemon that tends to inhabit the backs of Bygone? In real life, there are birds called Egyptian plovers who share a symbiotic relationship with Nile crocodiles. Oh, those are the ones that eat the stuff out of their teeth. They swoop into the crocodile's mouth. There you go. Then eat the decaying meat in their teeth. They get a meal and the crocodile gets all clean as long as it doesn't eat the birds. Then they don't. So how about we they make really a bird don't. that eats the poisonous and harmful berries on Bygone? So let's make that bird! Burn. And it will definitely evolve too. Obviously I'm starting with the basic body shape. I want to make sure it doesn't look exactly like a plover so it's going to have a big cute head like all the other regional first stage birds. I'm not feeling this wide open eye, but that'll change eventually. I'm basically just sketching in the design the average Egyptian plover has, and to make it more Pokemon-like, I'll give it a unique hairstyle. And now, these birds are around water, so they need long legs to stick out, and since it's a baby bird, it needs that ruffled messy feathers that chicks seem to have. Now I'm finally fixing that eye. Having it squint like that makes it super cute. Just fixing up the sketch and all that's left to do is color in the black pattern since it's gonna be its signature look. But its colors are gonna be a huge part of the design, but before we see them, let's work on the evolved form. It's basically just an adult plover, so its head is smaller and its design is more aerodynamic, I guess. I want its body to flow, so the black pattern is gonna be more minimal and fluid. The eyes can finally be more angry and birdy, but I still want him to have a cool smile. This guy is pretty cool, and you know, to show it, the hair is slipped back. The wings are still long, and the legs are still long too, but it took me some time to get the pose right. And now I'm shading in the black for good measure, and there you have it. Poi Damn. Lover, the poison-loving plover, evolves at level 25 into Invalover, the invulnerable plover. Poi Lover has the immune ability, poisons don't hurt it, but depending on which berry it holds, it evolves into a different colored Invalover, based on the effects of the berry it had upon evolution. Orange That's Invalover cool. can't be burnt, blue can't be frozen, yellow can't be paralyzed, purple can't be poisoned, and pink can't be confused. That's why it's so appropriate that Poi Lover has multiple colors like an Egyptian plover. Hopefully that's a cool and useful gimmick. Honestly, bird watching would probably be a fun hobby for a Pokemon fan like me. I'll look into it, but back to the walk. I'm gonna get back on the High Line so we can make our way to Chelsea Market. Just like how the High Line was a converted was train line, the Chelsea Market is an indoor market that was converted from an old Nabisco factory. This is where the Oreo was invented. I was about to say, that place was on, um, not how it's made. What's that one? It's on the History Channel. Kind of store here. Naturally, I entered the Asian memorabilia store, chock full of things that inspired various Pokemon and other aspects of Japanese media. These Darumas are what inspired the Darumaka line. Ooh. Those lions inspired Pokemon like Entei and Arcanine. These Geodes inspired Gigalith and Geodude. This Dreamcatcher helped improve Lunala's design. Maybe we can make a full-on Dreamcatcher Pokemon though. Honestly, everything here has an exquisite pattern that we can use to design any Pokemon, really. But a majority of this market is food related, and that's not a bad thing. Just not a lot of inspiration for Pokemon. You see, this used to be a factory, so the pipes are still part of the design. I love how they're integrated. Pokemon that lives in a well or just pipes ain't bad. By the way, this is where the New York YouTube space is, but we're not gonna see that. This is also where they shot a lot of famous Food Network shows like Emerald and Iron Chef. Okay, that explains why, uh, why I've seen it before. We're gonna end this here before he makes the last Pokemon, so you make sure you go check that out. It's mostly because I haven't got the final crown put in on my tooth, so my teeth really hurt when I smile and talk a lot. 
which I've been doing a lot of today. So make sure you guys take it easy. Um, uh, any people who do art, this is a fantastic way to structure a video of like speed arting and other things, speed arting, speed drawing and other things that you're interested in. Um, it takes very little video editing experience to do this. Um, and it just takes time, which I'm sure you want to take a lot of anyways to get your video and stuff to be perfect. But uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Crocs, 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 Crocs. I'm rocking Crocs. I'm rocking Crocs. I'm rocking Crocs. Wearing Crocs, boy. I'm rocking Crocs. I'm rocking Crocs. I'm rocking Crocs. Wearing Crocs, boy. My Crocs are gold. My pops is old. My Crocs got soul. My Crocs are bold. I go to church. Wearing Crocs. I'm always turned. Wearing Crocs. My Crocs are great. Your Crocs are lame. With my Crocs, I can cross a lake. Crocs, 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 